Um, you don't want to know how many takes I'm on right now because I, I just keep rambling. And so I'm just going to try to make this as succinct as possible. So that way we can all get on with our days. By the way, if you ever have issues with your color, uh, get one of these color checker passport things. They're a little expensive. They are worth it because you can just upload stuff and then fix your color like that. Anyways, uh, hey everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back. So what's been going on with the channel, right? That's why you clicked on this video. I have been talking about it on social media, but just a little bit here and there. And if you don't follow me on social media, you're, you missed out on a lot of that. And that's why I've been getting a lot of people commenting on my videos. Where, where are you? Where, when's the next content coming out? So I figured I would just upload this video to let everyone know what's been going on and set expectations for the future because I think people kind of have a idealized vision in their minds of what a content creator is supposed to do and say and act. And I don't, I, I don't think I fit into any of those categories. So what's been going on? Well, going into mid to late 2019, I had a heart scare. Um, I went and talked to some doctors about some issues that I've been ha having, and at first I, I thought it was just stress, but then they had me wear an event monitor for 30 days. And I didn't make it very long into those 30 days before they found something very serious because I got a phone call from a nurse at 9.30 in the morning on a Saturday. Your heart had stopped for almost 10 seconds last night. So that's a big concern. That was a major kick in the teeth for me. <laughs> um, the worst part was is that because they didn't know what was going on and obviously having your heart stop is a major issue, uh, they told me not to do anything strenuous. No bikes, no working out basically keep my heart rate as low as possible. And I usually ride my bike like many people to decompress and de-stress, but I couldn't do that. So death spiral, right? It, it was really scary there for a while because they didn't know what was going on. And so they told me if anything starts acting weird, go to an emergency clinic, go to the hospital. Don't mess around with this until we can figure out what's going on. That makes you stare down your mortality a lot because there was a few times that I got carted off to the hospital just for them to make sure. And thankfully it was always something benign, like I had heartburn. They figured out that the core root of my issue seemed to be that I had sleep apnea. That was why my heart was stopping. And only at night, it wasn't happening during the day. Sleep apnea is one of those things where you can be a perfectly healthy adult that works out and still have it. If you are a person that wakes up in the morning with a headache, like constantly you're getting headaches every morning and they go away after you get up and walk around or you've slept for like nine hours and you still feel exhausted, go talk to your doctor, get a sleep study. You might have sleep apnea. So that was 2019. And then of course, 2020 came around and turned the whole world upside down. And I don't care who you are. This whole pandemic thing has affected everyone in some way. We're basically going through a very stressful mass trauma event where everyone's like, psychologically is kind of in a weird state right now. I actually decided at that point to start talking to a therapist because when I was going through my heart stuff, the, the doctors kept bringing up, hey, are you talking to anyone about your stress? Not only is what you're going through kind of rough, but it may also be part of the problem. Funny enough, my girlfriend is a mental health professional and she also had been recommending for a while to go and talk to someone other than her. <laughs> so I finally went out and I found someone. And it's funny because therapy and mental health is something that most Americans don't wanna talk about. It makes them very uncomfortable because the mindset is, if you have to go seek someone for therapy, it means that something up here is broken, you're unwell. Look at it this way, your favorite pro athlete gets injured and on social media they announce that they're injured and they start documenting their recovery and they show them going to physical therapy and getting surgery and showing you know updates of their progress. That is to be celebrated on social media, right? People will share those posts all over the place and be like, look at this person, not letting life get them down. They're gonna get back out there and climb that hill. And everyone is super happy when they get back. But if that same athlete talks about going through a traumatic event and going and, and working through that with a mental health professional, Hey, hey man, I didn't sign up for this content. I don't, I don't want to hear about that. Like, obviously you're just weak. 
Just like when you overwork a muscle and strain it, stress can overwork and strain your mind to the point where you kind of start losing yourself. Depression isn't just someone sitting in a bathrobe on the couch eating junk food and watching TV and doing nothing else because they're not motivated. You can be a perfectly functional adult, but stress and depression starts taking away the joy of life. Just like a physical injury, if you don't address it, it only gets worse. Even if it's just one session, a telehealth session even, it can make a world of difference. And it might uh, help you get through something that you didn't know you were struggling with. And it was a good thing that I started talking to someone because going into late 2020, uh, my grandfather was on his deathbed. And this was late into the pandemic. The next surge was coming. My, my grandmother is very old. She, she's in a high-risk group and she has asthma. Like COVID would just demolish her. Uh, and this was before the vaccine. So there wasn't even any type of safeguards. So as painful as it was, we decided as a family, because I have a very big family, that unless you were immediately local to them, um, couldn't go out and pay your last respects, which was rough because I, I kept putting off seeing him and, and a bunch of other people. And life likes to pile it on because late into 2020, right after my grandfather passed away, my aunt, my aunt and uncle live with my grandmother. My aunt uh, she was getting these really bad headaches and she thought they were just stressed at first, but then her speech started to get very slurred. And that was when they found out that she had a brain tumor and it was an aggressive one. So she had to very quickly go and get it removed. And for a while there, it was, it was looking good, right? She got the tumor removed. She had gone through chemo. She was starting to feel herself again. Unfortunately, life um, doesn't always pan out the way that we think it should or how it does in the movies because April, maybe early April, um, the headaches came back and then her speech started getting slurred and they found out the cancer was back with a vengeance and not too long after she passed away. And she had made a request for people not to come out for a funeral. And it sucked because I, I had already missed saying goodbye to my grandfather after not seeing him for too long. And same thing with my aunt. I had not seen her in years. And the, the cancer scare made me want to go out there, but I kept putting it off. And then I never got my chance. So... If there's someone in your life that you haven't talked to in a while that means a lot to you, um, try to see them. At least call them. Because life, life moves really fast sometimes and the people that you think will always be there uh, will one day not. And that was really the point where, you know, I thought towards the end of 2020, maybe I'll get back into making videos, but then losing two family members in quick succession just drained me mentally, emotionally, physically, even I, I just decided I was done with content creation for a while. I had no motivation. There was no spark. There was no joy in any of it. So I just stopped. I'm, I'm to the point now where I think I'm ready to kind of start picking things back up again. It's going to be slow. And this leads me into setting expectations moving forward. Now there's a lot of content that I want to burn through very quickly because there's been a few companies that have sent me stuff to review and I just never got around to it. And some of it I might actually just send back and apologize. Uh, but there are some other stuff that I do want to make videos on because those videos are kind of important to me because I, I feel like some people should be educated in buying the products that I got sent. Once I burn through a bunch of content, it'll basically be I become very picky on what I make videos on. And you might see a video come out once a month for a while and then suddenly nothing for a year. It's just whatever strikes me at the time. Maybe a company reaches out to me and I'm very interested in their product, or maybe I just get a cool idea in my head. As I mentioned before, everyone kind of has an expectation of what a content creator should be like. And I originally started this channel for fun. 
And then it suddenly hit a point where it just blew up and I kind of got caught up in that whole mindset of algorithm and documenting everything and making content out of my entire life and it just consumed everything. And I think that was part of what led to the burnout. You know, like I was already kind of feeling fatigued before 2020 and then when everything just blew up, suddenly, you know, I had to step back and take inventory of whether or not I was actually having fun making content anymore or I was just doing it out of an obligation. And I was just doing it out of an obligation. That doesn't lead to good content. I, I honestly get tired of the whole hustle vibe or the hustle thing where it's like, oh, you got to grind, man. You got to grind. You got to build that business. You know what? If you just want to make fun videos occasionally, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with being a YouTuber and a YouTuber and a doctor, a YouTuber and a carpenter, a YouTuber and a IT professional. And it doesn't have to be a 50-50 mix. It could be like 95% of the time you have a full-time job that you go to and then that other 5% is just you uploading a video every now and then. Not everything you do in life needs to be documented because one thing that really killed me was I would be working on a side project like building a, a utility bench or something like that and in the back of my mind, I always had that voice like, you know, this would be really good content. I like working with my hands and sometimes I just want to do a project for the satisfaction of it. So if that means that I don't turn it into content, that's fine because I still get to enjoy the end product and maybe I can kind of talk about it after the fact in the video. I don't know. It's, it's weird. I, I guess maybe I'm getting disenchanted with the whole influencer lifestyle and, and feeling like everything has to be monetized. Sometimes I just want to talk about stuff. Uh, case in point, if you do decide to follow me on Instagram or any other platform for that matter, just know that I'm going to talk about whatever random thing I find interesting at the time. I've been getting into 3D printing for a while. I am an IT professional, so I talk about geek stuff. I also like urban art, uh, video games. Whatever is interesting at the time, I'm going to talk about it. And the algorithm hates that because people like consistency. Like maybe someone subscribed to me because they really like my mountain bike content, but then they go to my social media and they find 3D printing stuff. That's fine. If you don't find that interesting, whatever. Like I'm not going to bend over backwards to make a computer program happy. Like I don't, I don't really care anymore. And maybe that's because I have a point of privilege. I have a full-time job that pays me very well. And I'm lucky enough to have a boss that respects me and a team that's really awesome. And I just enjoy doing what I do because it actually helps people. I recently moved into a different career path and I actually feel like I help people for a change instead of just selling product. So that's where most of my energy is gonna go. That was a bit of a ramble and a tangent, but hopefully, hopefully I didn't sound pompous or arrogant. It really is just taking a step back and realizing I need to focus on myself. Anyways, um, with that, I hope you are doing well. Um, like I said, it's been a rough couple years for everyone. Please, please be mindful of yourself. Take inventory of how you feel and definitely talk to someone if you think you need to. And wherever you are and whatever type of bike you have, get out there and find your next adventure. Have a good one.